I'm Mary. I'm so pregnant. I'm Joseph. I'm in a bad mood. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Is that supposed to be me? Yeah, asshole. What do you think? <laughs> Look at me, I'm Joseph. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I don't blame. <laughs> yeah. I like to get them both. Talk about that donkey that helped his son. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> Josh is like, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. The star. Yeah, the star, people. Starring Tracy Morgan. And starring Tracy Morgan. <laughs> and Tyler Perry. And, and, and Oprah. <laughs> and right. As a camel. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm going to play the trailer for this. You know, Chris she knew that before she did the voice. <laughs> I mean, I, we're going to talk about that a little bit. I don't know what happened here. This is one of the most mysterious, weirdest films that I've seen. I had to go through some hoops to see it. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. And there's going to be a lot of nativity themes going on, but none of those nativity themes would be possible if it weren't for, for Bo. <laughs> Bo, Bo, the, Bo, Bo the jackass. <laughs> Bo jackass. <laughs> Bo jackass horseman. Bo ja- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the story of that, 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 that star that led Jesus to Bethlehem. But little do people know that None when, of that actually happened. <laughs> uh, oh, well, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> but little people know the story that went on because it all was from the point of view of an animal, a donkey named Bo. And Mary and Joseph didn't know that the, the path was clear for them because coming after them was a big old Hulk and henchman with two mean ass dogs, the voice of Ving Rames and some other, <laughs> some other actor. And, and, uh, and, they, and they were out for blood. They were going to kill Jesus, of course, because that was, he was prophesized to be the king of course sure. the king at the time was like i ain't having none of that shit mm-hmm. and it was Bo that said you know something i might not get any credit for it i might not be thanked for it no one might ever they may never hear this story but it's okay as long as there's somebody who's born to take the sins of the world okay and i'm proud to show the untold story of Jesus through this trailer right here, and I will be back with my review for The Star. You need to listen to what I'm about to say extremely carefully. Do you want a belly rub? The Star. See, that's what I love about this. It's a very deep moving story, too, Mark, if you couldn't tell. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad these unsung heroes yeah. are getting their due. Finally. You didn't know that a pigeon's ass helped get Jesus to the manger. <laughs> the untold story, Martin. <laughs> jackass for Jesus. <laughs> Actually, I'm a jackass for Jesus. Y'all don't know. Y'all talk about me not being religious and I need Jesus. I went through hoops and loops for Jesus this weekend. The trials of Job. Huh? Yeah, man. I, yeah, the trials of y'all missed that book, The Trials of Corey Coleman, <laughs> trying to see this movie. Because I, I almost feel ashamed to say because I've been out there pimping this uh, this app for so long. But Movie Pass. Uh huh. So I went out there. To oh, go, you broke your your Movie Pass cherry on this one? No, I did that on the Orient Express. Myrtle Orient oh, Express. okay, gotcha. No, with uh, I I tried to go see this with Movie Pass. Uh huh. And the, oh, they did not take it. The app would not work. It just could not figure out where I was. Wait, I, you don't use a card? Yeah, but you have to use your, the app before you use the card. And the app wasn't finding the location where I am. It has to find the location where you are. Then it will tell you the theaters that you had, that, that are, are available or showing the movie you want to see. And then you sign up for the movie online. And then you oh, go. Okay. And if you can't see anything, then you're shit out of luck. Oh, so, <laughs> so you typed in the star and, and it went, come on, brother. And no, yeah, it didn't show me shit. <laughs> It's like, you know what? You don't d- deserve to see any movie. <laughs> you Tell you what, look up in the night sky for a yeah, star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Follow that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This shit, it would not show anything. So I'm there for like 15 minutes trying to get it to come up. I'm putting in a ticket to movie pass. And, and finally, I just looked around and I guess people just got used to seeing me standing there. So I just walked on in. Oh, okay. By that point, and plus they had the wrong time listed. So by that point, I missed about 30 minutes of the movie. Oh, dang. But I'm there, and so I'm going, I'm going, I'll am going. watch it. And then I get out, and this is how dedicated I am to y'all. I get out, and, I, and the app finally decides to work. And it says, well, you know, there's a 9 o'clock showing down the street. And I went, I went over there. and Paid and, the money. No. 
No, I, I actually signed up for it this time for the, on the app. Okay. And then at that point, it just uh, the person at the box office who was standing back there, he's like, I, I don't see this movie right now. I, I can't bring it up. Uh, go see, uh, go, go, go ask the assistant desk, or sorry, the, uh, the assisting desk. And I went in there and I just walked on in. Yeah. And well. just saw the, yeah, I went to two theaters to piece this movie together. <laughs> I actually watched it in reverse. Okay. <laughs> just make sure that you didn't miss the good part. Yeah, exactly. Make sure I didn't miss anything. But with this, I will tell you something. One of the first things that you notice when you watch this is that there is nothing cinematic about it mm -hmm. at all. It looks like a TV movie, like a TV Christmas special. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing cinematic about this whatsoever. But there it is on the big screen, parading around just like Disney made this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, just just showing you, and, it, and because it's 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 flaunting itself around on the big screen, you get to see just how generic this is in every way. I mean, it's just like blowing up, it's blowing up. Like, look how cheap we are. <laughs> 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 you know, it's just like when you people had had the, like high definition at first, and I'm like, I can see every blemish on my skin. Right. <laughs> like, I can see every cheap sh piece of shit with this movie right here, man. And. You know, the, the, you, you see just how generic it is on the big screen. Now, it's not just because of the aesthetics of it and the look of it, but let's not forget that this is a faith-based film. Right. So because of that, they're like, well, you, you better watch out because uh, Jesus is watching. <laughs> so we can't, hey, we, we can... We can be funny, but like, we 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 can't we can't be too risky though. Mm. You know, we can't be we can't be too edgy. Sure, Jesus might hear. You don't want to make Jesus cry. So, <laughs> so this this right here, they 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 you know again, it's not very edgy at all. They can't even say poop. They have to say number two. Oh <laughs> yeah, they they are very careful. So. What you have here is the most watered down Disney talking animal movie that you've ever seen, man. Did they say poop? He said, I'm go find to poop on. He said no. He said, I'm going to go find someone to do a number two on. Man, I saw this movie twice, practically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Diego. How yeah. dare you? Yeah, how dare I, 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 I was taking notes in there. And, you know, you, you, uh, with that, of course, you get all these, these lame-ass jokes. You know, these really corny jokes that appeal to the seven and under crowd. Uh-huh. You know, uh, I mean, things like that are even not that clever. Things like, oh, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. Oh, we're not going to die. You know, that's the, writing, the level of writing that we have here. Oh, my it, friend. It doesn't go above that. Why are they even doing 9 o'clock showings? <laughs> I mean, because, because kids. What kids are seeing this that late? But I was, man, Martin, I'm glad you brought that point up because it's the weekend. Uh -huh. And kids are going. You know, parents have to, some of them have to work during the weekend, and, sure. and they have to work earlier. Or right, that's the only day that they have with their kids. They got to run errands. It just sounds like like every kid it's aimed for nine o'clock is past their bedtime. Not the night I went, because the, the, it it wasn't sold out. It wasn't packed. But the theater, they were small theaters, but they were half full, and they were mostly little kids in there. And I'm gonna tell you something: the parents that were in there. They were bored off their ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's like, like if maybe, maybe if you're like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, <laughs> you might, you might enjoy this. You know, you, you oh golly goo, you know this is great. It's about Jesus, <laughs> but there are there were like a couple of middle aged women behind me, and they were laughing because hey, it's cute, you know, talking animals, uh -huh. but. In that dark, I just saw those profiles of those parents and slumped over. Slumped seats. over. <laughs> and, yo, man, they like, you know what? I'm cool with Jesus, but this shit needs to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> they, the parents would. Jesus need to come off. <laughs> they were not amused. They were like, they were looking like, like for their kids, like this is this is your monthly movie. This shit right here. <laughs> Next time, daddy you chose poorly. <laughs> yeah. Next time, daddy going to see Justice League, and you going. <laughs> Fucking donkey of it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, were, they were bored. I'm telling you, parents were bored. And Martin's over there playing, so like he was snoring. I'm not lying. The first theater that I went into, man was just knocked out. And I see the, I would see the other parents, and they look so envious. 
they, 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 like they wanted to sleep too, but their kids would like bouncing off of them, jump, jumping on their laps and everything. They, they were just looking like, damn, I wish my kid would let me sleep like that too. No, no, at, at, at My Little Pony, the guy next to me, he was slumped down in his seat, snoring. His kid at ADD was bouncing all around, but he, he had just reached that point where he was like, I don't give a shit. Oh, yeah. I'm sleeping through all this. It I'm was sleeping through that motherfucker here <laughs> and whatever's going on on the screen. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> this is my 90 minutes of peace. Yeah, it was. It was the big black dude with his wife, and there were two little girls with him. And one of the little girls tugged on his mom and said, "Daddy is stoned." She like, "Leave him alone." <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother. Just let him sleep. Your daddy works hard. Yeah. You drug his ass out. Let him sleep. It's the least you could do. Yeah, he, he, he's just like, leave him alone. Don't touch, don't touch him. Because you saw one of them girls, like, she was about to touch him. Like, stop. Uh-uh. Let daddy sleep. <laughs> you don't want daddy yelling when he goes home. <laughs> but the, what got me is that the second screener that I went to, there was some dude, like some 20-something, maybe early something, early 30-something, some early 30-something white dude just in a chair by himself, knocked the fuck out, contorted in his seat, uh-huh. <laughs> sleeping. And I looked at him, I was like, that's a dude that has movie pass. Uh-huh. He's, trying, <laughs> he's, he's trying to take full advantage of that thing. He's like, he, he, he didn't want to get his money where he's going to get his money where he didn't want to see no goddamn star. <laughs> but he's like, hey, I have to. I've seen everything out there. I got to go see this. <laughs> There's no other explanation. I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> I mean, he was just slumped over his seat, just contorted. And, uh, you know, it was, I, I don't blame these people, man. For adults, it is really nothing there. And as far as the, the characters go, of course, the characters in this, very shallow. I mean, needless to say, because it's for little kids. Now, you know, when I say shallow, the characters are very typical. You know, they're defined by one personality type. Sure. You know, I'm the, I'm, I'm the funny one. I'm the uptight one. I'm evil. I'm a henchman. I'm a sidekick. You know, I, or I'm the straight guy or the straight woman. What I find fascinating is the caliber of, of actors they have, the stars with all these voices. You know, they most of them are character actors or people you really know from stuff. Big mm-hmm. names: Oprah, Tyler Perry, Tracy Morgan. But but it's led by Stephen Yoon, Glenn from The Walking well, give Dead. Give me time, I'll get to it. Mark. Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on, <laughs> Martin, get, get so hold on. You know, what well, well, keep flashing? Martin, fa- yeah. Martin, follow me like the star. <laughs> I'll tell you, because the well, thing about with these characters is that they have, uh, not, you know. Any kind of character development they have for these characters that have one trait, it's not that much development for them. There are two other characters that I will get to later, but character development for these animals are maybe like a musical theme. And it's funny because, <laughs> because it's one of those movies where it is so, it is so uninspired and so typical. Like when they have, like all the camels are voiced by black characters, or right. black, but black actors. Right. So therefore, when they hit the scene, <clears throat> They had to play the the funk version of the nativity theme or something. While they're walking through the desert. <laughs> Very 80s R and B. Hang on! Cyrus! I can't believe we passed that last oasis. Have you seen the presents these guys are bringing? Gold? Murphs? Could be a baby shower. You know what? I'm gonna stop right here because. Uh, uh, Tracy Morgan. All right, you know I get it. Tracy Morgan gonna do anything anyway. And plus, he's got doctor's bills right now and everything. So you know, he, this ain't no, he got a huge settlement for Walmart. Oh, okay, he, all right. He got no doctor's bills. Uh, so he ain't. He, well, you know what? If you, he don't care, man, call him out. He's like, I, I got a unique voice. I will make animals funny. You know, he's yeah. done this before. <laughs> he's, he's working it. And he's. I ain't got nothing against Tracy Morgan doing this. You know, he. I, I, I get it. Um, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, you just throw Jesus in anything in a wig and a dress, he'll show up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they just say Jesus. He's like, I'm there. And it sounds like he's just reading lines. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's supposed to be a regal camel in this, but he's just kind of like, you know, anything for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Talking camel, I can do that for Jesus. Jesus being so good to me, amen. But Oprah Winfrey? I'm Oprah, and I am Deborah the camel. <laughs> I'm like... Did Jesus himself call you up and like, girl, I mean, good to you. You better get your ass on that movie. Well, you know how close her and Tyler are. Yeah. I mean, she made him. Look, I don't, th- Oprah ain't that beholden to anybody. No, Oprah ain't that, but they, like I said, there is nothing cinematic about this. P- 
Pixar and Disney probably been calling Oprah to do voices, and they, they never got her. Yes. And now she's doing this right here. Somebody tricked her into thinking this was going to be a bigger production than it was. Yeah. They just showed her Sony, and that was it. They didn't tell her it was like the budget, faith-based part of the company that was doing this. Yeah. Which is, again, I, <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's a story there and there's an explanation, but it's like, it, it's not even like she's doing that much. Right. You know, she's just pretty much playing the straight person, which means... I'm just going to talk in regular Oprah voice. Yeah, she probably did more work on that promo than she did doing the voice. If that much. This, you know, I, if there's anything about this movie, it just makes me wonder. I'm sitting up there like, how the hell did they get these people? I, I get it with other folks in there. Christopher, Christopher Plummer, he's old. He's like, shit, I got grandkids to watch this shit. I don't care. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Keegan Michael King, what's his name? He, he does everything. He does everything. He's like, I ain't really a you know a list a list star. You know, I I, I he does everything. Shit, even uh, Mariah Carey. You know, I I even get Mariah Carey doing this. But for one thing, they got Mariah Carey to to do like the theme song for this. And Mariah so Carey, you know, she she's so crazy. She probably thinks that she really is a bird or something. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so, you know I, I get these other voices right here. But some of them, I'm just like, I okay, I don't know. I'll just roll with it. But hey, good for you. You got him. It's a good selling point for the for the film. And Stephen Young, of course, that is Glenn from The Walking Dead. Like, well, shit, I ain't done nothing since I got my head bashed in. So, you know, and I need this. No, no. Him, him accepting, I understand. It's just funny that the, he would be the lead. Yeah, yeah. And like, you'd be a talking yes. <laughs> Does he get his head bashed in? Oh, good. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, okay. <laughs> and I will say this about him. Uh, I like him doing the voice. The funny thing is, is that he's, the reason why I got him, because he's an Asian guy that can do the most generic white guy voice. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, these, this how these movies are. They're like, especially if, you know, if it's a family movie that wants to be uh, inoffensive, wants to have broad appeal. So they get that one voice that sounds like this. Right. We got to help Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's like, but I will say that he does play it with, and you probably saw that in the trailer where he plays, he plays this with uh, gusto, with, well, with, with a lot of humor. You know, he, pl he plays it with more humor than I thought he would. And I give him credit for that. I'm going to pull up this clip. It's just an extended scene of, the, of what you saw in the trailer. And I like the way that he was, uh, that he was having fun with this. And this is one of the scenes in here that actually did make me chuckle because in the movie, Mary's cool with Bo, and Bo has been trying to help him out. It's a Joseph that's the that's an asshole, man. Well, of course. Yeah, he's like his I don't wife is pregnant, but it's not his baby. Yeah. Oh, and that scene <laughs> where they talk about that too, he's just gullible as fuck. Oh, they they talk about it because they, <laughs> because he's trying to beat on that donkey. He's like, get the fuck out of my house! <laughs> and then that donkey like, hey man, look at your wife, and he sees that baby bump, and he's like. Baby, and she's like, "Come on upstairs, let's talk about it." And she gives him the study. Cut to the scene, and he's like, "Oh, the Messiah! Well, it's all right. Oh, he don't even God. ask. The, <laughs> he don't ask. He don't ask. Bitch, wait a minute. You don't know. It's just like, oh, you mean he's gonna be the, the son of God? Oh, that mean God? I like brother-in-laws. You know, shit. All right, that's cool. All right, all right, man." <laughs> But he's an asshole to Bo, man. Like, but you know, for no reason, he's, he's got to take it out on somebody. Yeah, he's got to take it like, like he he should be looking for the dude that knocked his wife up. But he's like, I don't want you hanging around that donkey, okay? And Bo's like, bitch, I'm trying to help you. And I, <laughs> and that's why I like this scene right here because it's like you know, he, he, even Bo is saying, Mary, Mary, you you cool, but your husband's a dick. Look at me, I'm Mary. I'm so pregnant. I'm Joseph. I'm in a bad mood. Da, 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 da. Is that supposed to be me? Yeah, asshole, what do you think? <laughs> Look at me, I'm Joseph, I'm a dumbass. I don't blame <coughs> I actually laughed at that part, it's funny. <laughs> da, 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 da. I like, get him, Bo! Yeah, fuck him up. Yeah, he's gullible ass. <laughs> well, son of God, okay, man. You know, I'm not. Look, I, I, I'm not trying to be sacrilegious, but uh, <laughs> but it, it's uh, it, it, but it, 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 that is one of the things where in the movie I'm like, okay, that's it's it's it, it does work because it is sweet natured, but it's one of the few spots in the movie where they're able to make that. That I don't mind it. I don't think you have to curse. I don't think you have to be 
edgy, edgy. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't think that you have to uh, go in and try to put in certain references for a movie to be like that. There's a certain thing about this movie besides the music in it, which I'll talk about in a minute, which makes this movie. Uh, there's, there's something nice about it being uh, it's meant for little kids. Okay. There's an innocence to it. And uh, that's one of the parts where I was like, wow, you were able to be funny without having to do what we routinely see in some of these bigger budget, more mainstream films. Sure. Um, you know, the, 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 but again, like I said, the characters are not that strong. In fact, they have a villain in here who he's so flat, he don't even talk. And the whole time I was looking at him right here, they, that's, they have a henchman who's the main villain. Like the king is the, you know, it, by Christopher Plummer. He's only in the movie uh, like a couple of scenes oh. for that to be the big villain. And that's not effective at all. But this guy right here, I was looking at him. I was like, I don't even like the, the design on this. Because I remember I used to have He-Man action figures. And he looks just like a He-Man figure I had called Ram Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's all I kept seeing the whole time. I was like, man, that's Ram Man right there. Yeah. When are you going to press down and like spring into action? <laughs> but uh, the music in this is something else that's kind of, uh, kind of annoying here because it starts out, again, it's trying to be one of these, uh, it's, it's trying to emulate a bigger budget mainstream movie in a way. And they have all these musical numbers in here, musical cues. And at first, it's like, okay, this is, I understand, this is, this is kind of necessary. But then they start playing one musical number and going right into another one. Oh. And it's almost like listening to a Christian pop station. Uh-huh. Cause they play R and B, country, <laughs> pop, you know, all of it's Christian ba- based. And then after a while they keep playing the, the music starts to narrate the, the film. It's like, you know, they start, they walk into an end, oh, we traveled along and narrow road, you know, and it's like and then they start following the star, they're like, follow that star, follow that star. And I'm like, Well, that what? sounds like it could work. No, it's filler. Okay. That's the thing about the movie. All these musical numbers, all these wacky gags with the, with the characters, that's not enough here to make a full film. I mean, forget about it not looking like a cinematic experience. It just doesn't even have uh, enough to make it feel like it merits being a theatrical release. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, I was, uh, I was watching it, and it reminded me of something when I was a kid. Now, I, if you've been listening to me for a few years, you know that I'm a huge fan of an. I, I'm an animator, so I love one of my one of my favorite animators is Don Bluth. And you probably re, you, you, you're thinking, man, I, I I know that name. Where what is that from? Well, a lot of you know Don Bluth for many things, but probably this. Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. Now, I know it from Stranger Things, too. Oh, well, a lot of, well, a lot of kids do. That's why I said they all know that. Mm-hmm. And before Don Bluth did Dragon's Lair, he was a Disney animator. Right. He learned his skills. And a lot of people don't realize that this story right here was actually, it's, it's kind of a version of another story that Disney did back in the day. It it's, seems awfully familiar. It's called The Small One. And that's, that, that short film was done in 30 minutes and told a similar story. Mm. The donkey didn't talk. They didn't have any wacky antics. It was actually a very emotional story about this kid that's forced to sell his donkey. And that little donkey who is hard to sell because he's kind of a runt, uh, he ends up playing this really important role in Jesus' birth. Oh, state your business, boy. I've come to sell my donkey, sir. Hmm. I'm going to eat that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> You've come to sell your ass, eh? <laughs> Third shop inside these gates. And he doesn't know that he's leading them to like a guy who skins animals. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like all. It, no, they have this short here has a lot of things. It has like suspense. It has danger, and most of all, it really is sort of a tearjerker too, in the in the happiest way. And it told that story in thirty minutes, and it feels like this is something that that this movie probably would have been better doing. Well, I kept thinking this was more like that uh, that Rankin Bass uh, special, Nestor. It's I know about a, it's about a donkey. They never played that. They didn't play that one that often. But if you see those collections in the store with Rudolph mm-hmm. and all those others, it's always in there. It's one of those. Man, I don't even remember that. I might have seen it. Yeah, I think I, I saw it maybe once or twice, but it's one that's not that familiar to me. But it's about the the donkey that was with them for Christmas. 
leading up to Jesus' birth in the manger. Boy, there's a lot of donkeys out there saying, man, you better get this shit straight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe it was, it was one donkey, and this is just a legend there, as yeah, it gets he... told, you know, spread out and, 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 and miscommunicated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we find out the donkey's actually Jesus. <laughs> Nah, I ain't sell all that. <laughs> but, but no, you know something? I will say that near the end of look, this is not anything, again, that I think needs to be seen on the big screen, judging by how the parents were probably not that into it. But it's inoffensive, too. I think that this is actually very touching near the end, too. Like, all the animals are gathered around the baby Jesus, and that's where you even have it. That when I say there's no character development, you have some characters that actually change. Like, Jesus changes them right there. And it's, I'm like, oh, that's kind of that's nice. And and just this whole scene where everybody is just kind of in awe of this baby that's being born, and even that's kind of sad because you're looking at it and you're looking at that little baby, even a little cartoon baby, like damn, they're gonna fuck you up later. Oh man. yeah, yeah. This is uh, you know, it's but it's moving in a way where I say it's so innocent. The animation's not that bad. I will say this about the animation: if you look at everybody's eyes in this. They had the same pupils. Yeah, I know it's, it's sad. It's almost like every character has a glass eye or glass eyes. They mm-hmm. had the same thing. It would almost be, the, the animation would almost be kind of exceptional for this level if the eyes weren't so weird with the same, you know, in the same characters. So, well, it just sounds like like this started with ambitions and the budget got cut and cut and cut. Yeah, which makes me think that, bait look, let's not fool ourselves. As a wrap up here, we all know that these faith-based films that they're careful with their budgets and that's what they're doing here this is the this is the faith-based uh side company of sony where they don't spend a whole lot of money right so you know that going in which they probably will make a little money for the budget they have out in the theaters but i will say that hey man for a sunday school uh class or if you want to introduce the nativity and the story of jesus to a very young child hey you know you can do it this way so it's it's a rental man i'm not gonna Sit up here and like criticizes like okay. like it's trying to aspire to be more. It knows exactly what it is, and it was not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I was ready to go in there and just totally tear this apart. And it's like, all right, well, another movie that fooled me. Okay, you know? so yeah, yeah. And besides, the story of Bo must be known. You know, it's way it's been way too long. Man. <laughs>